Welcome back to Cure for the Common Game. Today we're going to talk about a tribal deck again. We're going back to tribe for today. Now, the tribe we're doing today only is 15 members strong. Tribal gods. Right now we have the Theros block. Each set gave us five gods. All keyed on devotion to become dudes. They all have really remarkable abilities while being enchantments anyway. Obviously, the general that I chose was Corona the False God. we got to be playing five colors here. so She seemed like a perfect fit, the False God. It was uh, actually a suggestion from a, a, my LGS owner, Adam, at the Gamers Hall here in Jackson. It's a great store. But anyway, Miss Corona here seemed like now I'm hardly ever going to cast her. If I do, there's a problem, but that's her. Now, we'll just jump straight to the gods. Obviously, we have the five monocolor. Yes, you'll notice they're in Wooberg order. Um, the five friendly gods and the five enemy color gods. Now, this is it. This is all we've got. There are only 15 gods in existence for right now. We are going to, my opinion here, I can't base this on anything. We're going to a Monquette in the next, like sometime next year. And it is a world ruled by Nicol Bolas. And it's Egyptian themed. Now I've been thinking about exactly what that means. Now, to me, it would be hard to do an Egyptian set without gods. Now, I think somehow Bolus will be over them, or he will, I don't know, because Bolus doesn't really, he wants to be the most powerful being. Hell, he probably is. But I think he will make a pantheon of gods. Maybe there'll be different versions of him. Maybe there'll be different attributes of him. Maybe it'll be just a pantheon that'll report to him. I don't know. But I do know that it would be hard to do Egyptian theme without gods. So therefore, I think we're probably going to get five new gods. And then maybe the Masterpiece series is going to bring back gods. There's 15 already, plus the new five. From there, they could flesh out the rest with either enchantments, legendary enchantments, Maybe the godly weapons. I don't know. Or they could go with... Uh, who, who knows? But just a theory. I don't know. Anyway, we've got all, all the godly weapons, obviously, for this deck. We have... Let's see. I got one walker. I'm running one walker. Ugin. Seems fitting. He's not a god. But come on. Let's face it. He kind of is. Um... Faded Retribution and Mortify, the only two instants I'm running in the deck. Now, obviously, our tribe is 15 members strong. Now, every one of them naturally has Indestructible, so we have a lot of board wipes. Plea for Guidance is pretty good. I like Plea for Guidance. I'm not running Enlightened Tutor or Idyllic Tutor, because let's face it, those don't grow on trees. But apparently, Pleas for Guidance do. And the fact that it gets two gods whichever two you need to complete your once they start ticking their devotion up when they start setting each one off it gets good harsh mercy harsh mercy is a wrath that not a lot of people know about everybody chooses a creature type and you destroy all creatures that aren't of a chosen type this way now it's kind of redundant in the fact that your tribe is going to be indestructible anyway but a lot of times you can i don't know you can politicize this and save somebody else's team you know decimate here again one for four this is great card advantage speaking of one for four what's better than that a queen tutor that's right conflux gets you a card of each color yeah it costs a crazy amount of mana. what is that eight mana don't care it's a five-card demonic tutor. Wow. 
We have our Wheel of Fortune variant. And now we're going to get into the board wipes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 board wipes. Now, Virtue's Ruin. Yeah, white decks are a thing. I know you've seen me do a couple. Dune Blast. Rolling Earthquake. Now, I like Rolling Earthquake a little more than I like Earthquake. Simply because Horsemanship, that's a hard mechanic to find. Not everybody has Horsemanship. Unless you're playing that one blue general. But anyway, Horsemanship, it's kind of broken. It was the Portal 3 version of Flying uh, because they didn't feel like Flying would exist in that world. But they had to have a mechanic that would do the same thing. So they created Horsemanship. So Horsemanship... For those that don't know, work exactly like flying. Only it says they can't be blocked except by other creatures with horsemanship. And you can guess how many creatures have horsemanship. Just cards out of Portal 3 Kingdoms. That's it. They've never revisited it. By the way, in Portal 2 and 1 and stuff, there's dudes with guns. That's another thing. They, Of course, we got our Wrath of God. Life's Finale. We're just wiping boards here, people. Martial Coup. Martial Coup is going to make you some blockers. End Hostilities. And it even nukes the uh, equipments. Almost said swords. I guess people do play equipment that's not swords. Mass Calcify. In Garrick's Wake. Get rid of them walkers, Holmes. Of course, Day of Judgment. Decree of Pain. And Extinguish All Hope. Extinguish All Hope is just about a wrath because non-enchantment creatures but let's face it it's not a lot now our actual enchantments i've got the five dictates had to it's kind of more themed than any, anything else um i really like these i catch myself not playing the uh red one as much for obvious reasons it, it doubles damage and of course now we got the propaganda and as far as tribal cards, Steely Resolve. I love Steely Resolve here again. It's a tribal card not a lot of folks know about from Onslaught. Ch choose a creature type. Creatures of that type gain Shroud. Is it Shroud or is it Hexproof? It's Shroud. It's Shroud. It, it was pre-keyword, but this is really good for two mana because the only problem with playing an indestructible tribe is they will get exiled. This kind of prevents a lot of that now artifact mana obviously we've got uh you know it's it's hard to build without a soul ring it's it's i know it's just me but i run all five border post and i like the border post because they do at some times cost one mana but they also have two colored mana symbols in them. so they tap their dual color mocks if you will yeah i know they cost something but the upside their casting cost is actually the upside here because they help contribute to your devotion so they speed you up and they speed up your devotion it's pretty good of course we got the other world atlas i don't have a whole lot of card draw but the other world atlas is pretty good i don't have a clock or anything like that to abuse it but Obelisk of Erd. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. My indestructible tribe of gods needs to be bigger. Of course, we got God's End. Or Godsend, however you want to, you know. I, I I read it as Godsend, and, and then once I, I read the story, I was like, oh my God, no, it means God's End. Wow. Beautiful. Love it when Wizards sneaks something like this by us. The guys at Story doing a really good job. Of course, Library of Lang and Heroes Podium. Heroes Podium, I just look for decks to go to go into. It's a if you don't know what all, all this means, it's a coat of arms for legendary creatures. Plain and simple. There aren't a lot of decks that run a lot of legendaries. Obviously, all my my whole tribe here. It's hard to call it a tribe when it's only fifteen members strong. But I'm confident. I'm confident Amonkhetu is going to get us some more gods. And they're going to go right in. Now, I, I normally don't go over the lands, but since this is five color, I'll tell you, in every five color deck I have, the first 11 cards 
are the gates. And I know I'm not showing you a gate right now, but let's face it, this is a gate. I run Maze's End and all ten gates. Every five color deck should. It's not that you're banking on that win, uh, uh, the Maze's End win. But if you know anything about Magic's Past, Thawing Glaciers is a great card. This is a Thawing Glaciers for duels. Yeah, they come into play tapped. I don't care. But the ability for mana fixing here is so good. Because you can go get the colors that you need. It, it's five color decks, 11 lands, automatic. It's what I do. All the rest of it is your typical duels. And as always, I've got to run some basics because don't leave home without them. They're the five best cards ever made. That's what I've got for Corona, the False God. Well, that glare is kicking on her, isn't it? She's the leader of the Tribal Gods, of course. It's a pretty quick deck, pretty easy to play. It's pretty fun. The, uh, once, the, once the Devotion starts kicking in, you actually have creatures to attack with. Until then, people just really don't see you as a threat. You just kind of sit back. You maybe have one or two gods. You know, you're not... It's not a deck where you're going to constantly be busy all the time. It's a deck you play when you care more about having a good time and sitting around with your buddies and chatting, maybe grabbing some pizza, whatever. Um, it's not a real expensive deck to build, but it is a ton of fun. Um, please let me know what you think and comment in the comments below. Be sure to like, be sure to subscribe. I uh, do stuff like this all the time. Tribes. I love tribes. I have a lot of tribes built. Let me know what tribes you want me to uh, to want to see me do. I've already done griffins. Uh, I think I did a zombie horde, but that's not a, a zombie deck. There's there's a bunch of tribes I've got up here. Of course, everybody's got elves and goblins and zombies and whatever. Um, got soldiers. Soldiers is good. But anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. We appreciate you watching. Thank you now.